Jesus glad and the devil mad. Amen. Let's rejoice. Let's pick up our Bibles and wave them around, make Jesus glad, the devil mad. You know, I don't have any natural thing to tell you that'll help you. You can, you know, you can think and you can reason and all that, but the Word of God lives forever. And, uh, and I believe the office that I stand in comes with an utterance. It comes with a supernatural doorway that will help you. Supernatural. See, that's what we need. We need the supernatural. Let's say this together. Say, Heavenly Father. I'm not focused on Washington, D.C. I'm not focused on Austin, Texas. I'm not focused on a man or, or a political party, but I, my help comes from the Lord. I'm looking to heaven, and I thank you for this holy written word and for the spirit that inspires it, and I believe I receive strength supernatural strength and I am an overcomer in Jesus name amen you can be seated praise God so glad for all of you to be here on this kind of a dreary day my dad used to call days like this bad day at Black Rock an old 50s movie with Spencer Tracy <laughs> well it's a bad day at Black Rock <laughs> that was the crummiest movie he said that's the worst movie I've ever sat through <laughs> He wasn't much of a moviegoer. All right, let's, see, let's look at Hebrews chapter 8. I want to I continue talking about the present-day ministry of Jesus. You know, a lot of people are wondering, what can I do? Let's talk about what Jesus is doing right now. <laughs> I mean, he's not just sitting in heaven in flowery beds of ease with, you know, angels and birds and stuff like that fluttering around. He's, he's got a job. And, uh, and the present-day ministry of Jesus, we've been talking about it. We've had two... two uh, uh, messages on that. So if you haven't heard those, avail yourself of the, of the media and get plugged in. Uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter 8, which is our, our uh, foundational scripture, verse 1. And uh, uh, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Hush. Hush. You're out of order. Go back in the little can that you... Siri is talking to me. I didn't get that. Would you tell me again? Yes. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> All right. Verse 1. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. And what were the things that were spoken? Well, that Jesus is better than the angels. Jesus is better, amen, than Moses. Jesus is better than Aaron. Jesus is better. That's the whole, that's the whole point of the book of Hebrews that Jesus is better. And so uh, the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set or appointed on the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Verse 6, but now hath Jesus obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Better than what? Well, better than the Jews, better than Israel. Amen. So we, the church has a better covenant. Um, and so high priest is one that is authorized to administer, execute, implement, and carry into effect our profession. That's in Hebrews chapter 3. We went over that last Sunday. And then we added to it on Wednesday night. If you happen to be able to tune, on, to tune in on live stream, it's still there, I think. We haven't been taken down yet. I don't believe, I'm not believing to be taken down. And that's why I'm going to, I've asked the Lord to help me, uh, make me wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. I'm not trying to lose our ability to communicate with you. And our president has lost just about all of his ability to communicate with his people, but he's got, he's got a few aces in the hole. And so, uh, but I think it's absolutely ridiculous. But, um, uh, and so we, we talked about that. An intercessor, and advocate, we put that together, uh, stands between man and God. Jesus is, ever lives to make intercession for us. And uh, he advocates. He's like our family attorney. Why? Why would we need that? Well, because we live in a flesh body that's being assaulted 
uh, all the time with temptation. Sometimes we succumb to it. Sometimes we bow to it. Sometimes we, we let fear get the best of us. Sometimes we, you know, sometimes we sin. And when I say we, I'm not talking about our spirit being because our spirit has been born again. It's made in his image and likeness. And in our spirit, our spirit never agrees with what our body and mind agree to do. So when I say we, it's not really us that sinned. It's really our flesh and or in conjunction with our mind. And because we are tempted that way, he's tempted in all points like as we are. Can you imagine the administration that he grew up under? I mean, he was born in the Herod administration where they killed all the babies two, two years and younger, just looking for him. I mean, that was, <laughs> you talk about oppressive and then the Jewish uh, powers that be weren't very much better than Herod. In fact, Herod was half Jewish. You didn't know that, right? <laughs> He's half Jewish. That's, you know, he was kind of like a trustee. They said, okay, let's get one of them and let them make him king. And, uh, you know, he, he's kind of like those people that oversaw the, the, the Holocaust. A lot of them were Jewish that threw the Jews into the ovens. They were Jewish themselves so that they could gain the trust Oh, I tell you, the devil's evil. The devil knows how to, to, to play these games. They're not games, are they? But uh, so he's, our, he's, he's, he's tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. So when we do miss it, all we have to do is confess, and he's, he's like the family attorney. He's our advocate. If any man sin, 1 John chapter 3, if any man sin, we have an advocate. We have a family attorney who says, Jesus it says, Father, there's my blood. It's right there at the mercy seat in the throne of God. And so we are forgiven and cleansed right that, just like that. Oh, what a wonderful Savior we have. Today I wanted to talk about the mediator because we saw that in verse 8 or 6, rather, <clears throat> that he is a, a mediator of a better covenant founded upon a better promise. Actually, he's the mediator of two covenants right now, well, three covenants, if you really know, want to know about it. He's the mediator of the first covenant, Israel. They have, a, they have a covenant with God. And Jesus is Jewish. He's a Jewish rabbi. And so he's up there, and he is able to be a go-between between Israel and God. Boy, do they need it. And then, of course, for the church. He's a go-between, between God and, and the church. And then uh, there's another entity on the earth that has a covenant with God. Does anybody guess who it is? The nation of America. We have a covenant with God. And he is the mediator of that covenant. Now, those covenants are different. They have different legal standings. They have different pleadings that can be pled. Uh, our covenant is uh, a better covenant. It's a better covenant than who? Well, than Israel, but it's also a better covenant than America. So America, if you haven't noticed, is under a shaking right now. I preached about this two weeks ago. I, listen, since, since the election, I have given you information that should keep you steady, keep you strong, keep you encouraged. Don't fall victim to the news media. I mean, you can't even watch local news now. There's really almost nothing you can watch without being polluted. I love Lucy is on sometimes. <laughs> Check that out. Amen. Veggie tails, I can't find any veggie tail. I have to, to get veggie tails, I have to resort not even to a DVD. I, all my veggie tails that we had when the kid, my grandkids were li really little or VCR. I mean, it's just almost unwatchable. But I, I get a kick out of veggie tails. Other than that, there's not much to watch on television. All right, Copeland, you 366, watched Copeland, it's pretty good. All right, so he's a mediator. What, what, let's look at 1 Timothy 2.5, just a few pages over from Hebrews there. 1 Timothy 2.5. And we'll get into what exactly a mediator is. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The man, Christ, you don't forget, Jesus is a man. He's just like we are, except he's in heaven. And he has a, 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 a 
a permanent body. We're all going to have a body like his one of these days. It's, after the resurrection, our body will be like Jesus. We'll have, a, we'll have a permanent, eternal body that will never fade away. Right now, this body is decaying. I'm just, there's a race, there's a clock. I'm, I'm, wanting, to, I'm, want, I'm wanting to get here until my body gets uh, <laughs> remade. <laughs> I'm believing to make it, amen. All right, so there's a mediator, one God and one, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So what is a mediator? A mediator, definition, a uh, couple of shades here. One who intervenes between, number one, um, between two. See, between God and man, that's two. Uh, either in order to make peace or for ratifying a covenant. To make peace or to ratify a covenant. So you can kind of see that mediator is kind of like an advocate. And it's kind of like of an intercessor and it's kind of like high priest. See, they're, they're interlocking all of, the, all of what he does at the right hand, his present day, everybody say his present day ministry. His present day ministry, uh, those functions are interlocking and they flow between one and another. And that's how much we need a go-between. And it's not, the, it's not Mary, it's not the Blessed Virgin, it's, Saint, it's not St. Saint Stanislaus, it's not St. Saint, Saint Ambrose or St. Jude or any other saint. Jesus is the one mediator between God and man. Amen. That's it. And so he's mediating for peace. Or to ratify a covenant. What does it mean ratify? It means to confirm it. You got to know what's in your covenant. Otherwise, you're going to be at a loss. You're going to be having a hard time. Right now, especially when everybody's speaking evil of, of, of 80 million voters that voted in this election, so upwards of that. I mean, I, I hear different di figures. I don't think we know. It was so ma badly mangled. So it's somewhere between 74 and 80 million people in America voted. And this past week, it's hard to see it. It's hard to watch it. But you see that, that vote being uh, dis they're disregarded. And by some of the people I, I just got through voting for. I just got through pulling the lever for some of these people. <laughs> So we need our covenant ratified. I so that's who I'm going to. I went over their heads. Amen. Supreme Court, I went over their heads. Amen. Amen. Y'all are y'all getting this now? Amen. We don't have to, we don't have to be a bunch of victims and a bunch of gnashing our teeth and everything else. Amen. We've got a higher, oh, praise God. He's set in the heavenly places at the throne of the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. And he's our mediator. Yes. Glory to God. So it's it's order to make peace or for ratifying a covenant. It's also a medium of communication or an arbitrator. If you've ever signed a contract, many times contracts, modern contracts, are, we live in such a litigious society, that means people sue each other all the time that sometimes you sign your rights away when you sign that contract and you agree not to sue the person that you're doing business with, but you agree to arbitration. And so instead of, if, let's just say you get through the contract and you're not, you don't like what's going on, well, you can't sue because you just signed your right away. Be careful what you sign. And so, and most people don't sue because it's expensive to sue. I mean, you know, you, you know, you got to hire an attorney and pay, and they don't do it for free, right? And so, you get involved in a lawsuit, you're going to pay a lot of money out, and so the reward has got to be, you know, equal or greater than than what the costs are and all that. So, a lot of people freely say, "Oh, yeah, arbitrator, you can pay for that too, honey." But an arbitrator bypasses the court, bypasses the judge, and the arbitrator is one and the same. The arbitrator puts his hand over here on you that have, you're, you're not, you didn't get what you thought you should have gotten in the contract. Money's changed hands or something's changed hands, and you didn't feel like you got treated fairly. And then he puts his hand, the arbitrator does, on the, on the person. And, and he hears your evidence, and he hears his evidence, and he comes up with a decision that you both have to live with. And that's the end of the story. Because you signed your right away. 
Well, that not, might, might not be bad in some cases. I've known of cases where it was disastrous. <laughs> Depends who the arbitrator is. I'll tell you what. i tell you, I have total confidence in our arbitrator, Jesus Christ. I have total confidence. When he sees a controversy between the church and its government, I tell you, I have confidence in Jesus. I have confidence in him. And I have confidence that he will go to the Father and he will make that argument. Oh, come on. Glory to God. We keep wondering about, oh, it's too late. No, nothing with God is ever too late. This Bible is example after example after example of things that went right down to the wire. You know, last Sunday night we had Power Hour, Hour Plus, And I mean, we got over it. God just said something to me about Esther on the way. Wasn't, I didn't even have any preparation about Esther. But boy, Claire got up here. She prayed it all out. And we talked about Esther in, in Esther's day. You talk about the last minute. And what was, what was at stake? The entire Israel nation. They were under sentence of death. Yes. And God went, whoo, and just, he just changed it just like that. And instead of Mordecai hanging on the, uh, on the gallows, it was Haman and his ten sons. <laughs> they hung. Amen. I tell you, there's, there's coming a reverse here, coming up here pretty soon. <laughs> a medium of communication. They, they can cut. Listen, they want to cut all our communication off. They're trying to take the president's email away from it. Email service. I don't know if you heard that where he can't even email his supporters. <laughs> yeah, we live in America. I, don't we live in America? I thought it was still America. But anyway, sounds more like Germany, sounds more like China. But uh, I better shut up. That's been getting pretty on the edge. They might put a, you know, a disallow thing on my video. John 14, 6 Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. So when Pelosi says we need God's blessing, God had nothing to do with that decision that they made. God has nothing to do with you, Nancy baby. You don't qualify for the blessing. Guess what you do qualify for? <laughs> A one-way ticket, yeah. The day tripper. Anyway. Right. I want you to see Job. Let's look back here. Talk about mediator. What's, what is Jesus doing? See, we've, we've got to know what he's doing, see, so that we, we don't tear our hair out in suspense. You know, Jesus, this thing... Listen, Jesus is listening to us. He's our high priest. He's the one that gives us what we need to say about our nation. I, I see a lot of people giving up on everything. Listen, don't give up on America yet. This is our inheritance. That's exactly what the, the first generation of, of Jews did when they saw the promised land and all the giants in the ball cities. They gave up. They gave up. They just gave up. Oh, we be not able. You know, we're able, and so God, God is able. John, uh, Job, have you found Job chapter 9? Um, talking about God, verse 32, For he's not a man as I am, that I should answer him, and we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any daysman betwixt us that might lay his hand upon us both. Well, that was Old Testament. That's Job. He didn't have a very a full understanding. Of, of, of God, but the word days, daysman in my margin means umpire. He was looking for an umpire that could put his hand on him and his hand on God. See, that's a mediator. A mediator puts his hand on the one that's got a problem and a hand on God, and he mediates the situation. He opens up the lines of communication. Are you with me now? Well, that's Jesus for us. We have an umpire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have him. He's working at that. I'll tell you what. Because Cornelius had a mediator, he got saved. If he hadn't had a mediator, he never would have been saved. Think about Cornelius. Cornelius was a, 
was a, a centurion of the a Italian band. Here he is a high up in the, in the Roman army. Tra trained, if you're a centurion, I mean, you're a trained killer. You, you know all how to kill people with your bare hands. You don't even need a sword. And yet he did good. He, he, he prayed to God always. He gave alms. He had the fear of God, and God said, you know what? We can't let him go to hell. He needs to get saved. You know, and so that P an angel goes and appears to Peter and the whole thing, and so he, Peter goes and preaches in his house, in his old house, and all of his cousins and everybody, all of his friends, they all got saved. And here they were Gentiles. Well, how did that happen? He had a mediator. I mean, let's talk about Paul. He had a mediator. What was he? He was a, he was a terrorist. He was putting people, Christians, to death. He was, he was capturing them, kidnapping them, hauling them off, and they would die. And he held the garments of those who stoned Stephen. Didn't do a thing about it. But something about Stephen kept getting in him and get, getting in him. And you know what? He finally got saved. Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. He had a mediator. No man cometh to the Father but by him. I think about Abraham. Abraham acted as an umpire uh, for, for, for Lot's city. Lot, his, his nephew, remember he had gone after and defeated the five kings and brought all the spoils back to, to Lot and gave it back to him, recovered all of his you know, wealth and all of that kind of thing, gave a tenth of it to Melchizedek as a tithe. And then the king of Sodom comes out, oh, yeah, go ahead, keep the wealth, just give us the, people, just give us the wives and the children. He said, I'm not going to keep anything unless you, you, I've already lifted up my hand to God. He's my source. I'm going to tithe, and I'm going to pay expenses of my men, but you're going to get everything back. I'm not going to let you say that you made me rich. And then God says, shall I hide from Abram the thing that I do? Because the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah had risen up and God had to judge it. We talked about this, I guess, Wednesday night about vials and cups. When nations like America sin, they fill a cup. When that cup is full, it pours out. Now, it's not all pouring out right. There's, just, there's partial judgment happening in America. There's, there's a lot of instability. There's a lot of division. A lot of threats. And all the threats are not coming from us. They're coming from the establishment. I'm not even going to say Democrats anymore because a lot of them are Republicans. Shame on them. But, um, you know, these things have to be dealt with. As a nation, you have to deal with them. I think Donald Trump has done more to mollify the, th the sins of this nation. Look what he's done just in, in abortion. He has made it harder. He has done everything he could to overturn uh, some of the, the things that, that Obama had put into place all over Africa and, 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 and Asia. He had made it, he had funded abortion over, overseas and, and Donald Trump interrupted all of that. He withdrew this gender thing to the military, wouldn't allow them to join the military and have that operation at our expense. Thank God for Donald Trump. Is he perfect? Well, no, he, nobody's perfect. Jesus is. He's done more good. And God sees it. I tell you what, I, I, to, I told the Lord, I said, we're, if, we're, if you're done with America, what about Germany? What about, what about France? What about all these, gosh, awful places? I've been to, I've been to these places. America is still the greatest thing God has on the earth. It still is. It's in spite of its faults, in spite of its, uh, its shortcomings. Come on. God's not done with America. Come on. And so what did Abram do? He went to the Lord. He says, oh, Lord, you mean you're going to destroy that city? Won't you? It, it, will you... Would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? What if there were 50 righteous? Shall not the Lord of the whole earth do right? <laughs> My God. I don't know anybody praying like that. And we got a better covenant than Abraham did. I mean, he held God to account. 
Shall you not do right? Surely you're not going to destroy the righteous with the wicked. I think we can say the same thing about America right now. I mean, God is not here to destroy where the church is. The church is stronger here than anywhere. Don't let anybody tell you different. That's a bunch of bunk. Not everybody's asleep. Not everybody's off base. Are you with me now? And so he said, yeah, no, I won't destroy it for 50. Okay, well, what about 40? Well, no. Well, don't get mad at me. Well, what about 20? I won't. Well, what about 10, Lord? Will you, will you save it for 10? He said, I'll save it for 10. And then Abram stopped. He stopped umpiring. He stopped being an intercessor. He stopped being a mediator. Are you with me now? And he stopped at 10. Why did he stop at 10? Well, I don't know. Ask him when you see him. He couldn't even find 10 people. Well, I tell you, there's a whole lot more righteous in America. See, I believe that, I believe that we have solid ground to go to our mediator. Are y'all with me now this morning? I, I want to give you strength and hope and, not, and have you, because there's a lot of people, they go to churches that just don't believe much. They don't have this word like, like we do. I'm not, we're not the only ones now. There's some really good churches out there. But there's a, some really crummy churches out there. We already know. We've seen it. Weak. Just pablum. And people are just, a lot, of, a lot of people, because of this COVID, they've been scattered. They're wandering around. They don't even go to church anymore. They're so, they're, number one, they're afraid to go to church, afraid they're going to catch something. See, you've got such influence. Let your light shine. Amen. Praise God. So our God is, uh, Jesus is a mediator. Now let's look at Hebrews 13. Got to really, really hone in on this one. Because if there's anything we've got to avoid, we've got to avoid fear. We've got to crush it. In the King James, I'll read it first in the King James, and then I want to come back to the Amplified, and hopefully Siri will not interrupt me this time. Let me get it back. There you go. Uh, Hebrews 13, and the ha halfway through the verse. For he hath said, that is God, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man will do unto me. Now listen to the Amplified. It's so good. It says, for he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, let you down, relax my hold on you, assuredly not. Glory to God. Come on, let's lift our hands. Our God is faithful. Hallelujah. We have nothing to fear from all these people that are moving their mouths, lying about what happened on Wednesday at that huge march. If you want to see an eyewitness account, uh, go to James's Facebook page, James Buntrock, Facebook slash James Buntrock, and read. He's got a video on there, and he's got, I mean, it is an absolute masterful report of what actually happened that you're not going to get listening to all the rest of these goofballs. And if you'll come back, I, we'll have him give it tonight in person instead of just, you, you can hear it and read it, but it's, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We believe in bringing things out in, through the word. And so if you can come back, well, it's gonna, supposed to snow. Well, you can drive in the snow. I mean, it's not going to snow here. Just get over it. They, they hype all this stuff up. Not going to snow. Just forget it. You'd have to drive all the way to probably, I don't know, Lubbock. Maybe get a little sleet in Brian. That's it. All right, so that's my, my weather report for the Sunday. <laughs> we get a wide-ranging uh, message when we come to church. We get a weather report. We get a political report. We get... <laughs> no fear about what is occurring. No, 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 no surprise 
that the devil and his crowd hate us. What's news about that? They hate us. We found that out. We found that out. It's, it's not a mystery. We know they want to shut us up. They want to take our freedom of speech. They want only their kind of speech. They want everybody to be, to be in lockstep with what they're saying, and don't you dare differ with them. There's no discussion. There's no debate. We're ending debate. This is what they want to do. If they get in charge, they want to end the filibuster, which basically ends debate in our Congress. So they'll, pass, they'll ram through anything they want, and, and the, whatever Republicans are brave enough to say anything, they don't get to say it. Not a whole lot of them brave enough to say anything, except I'm, I'm really proud of, of uh, Ted Cruz and yeah. Hawley and a few others like that. Thank God for them. So um, it's no surprise that they hate us. Look at Luke 21. Jesus told us, you know, I'm, I've been reading in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 about the end days. We're living through it, folks. God called us to live right now. We could have lived 100 years ago. We could have lived 1,000 years ago. We could have lived any time. God chose us to live right now. Don't you believe there's a special grace available for us to shine? Well, we have to, we have to major on what the truth is. The major on what the truth and not believe the lie. Amen. Luke 21, Jesus, in verse uh, 15, he was talking about answering uh, accusations and so forth. In verse 15, you know, people accuse you. And he said, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren and kin folks and friends, and some of you, Facebook friends, social media friends, they're not really friends. How many of you have discovered that they're not really friends? <laughs> and by the way, this is your family. If some of your family are rejecting you, well, this is, this is your real family. That's what Jesus said. I'm just telling you what Jesus did. I mean, you know, his own family rejected him. They came to haul him off to the psychiatrist, psychiatric ward. I think one of them had a straitjacket in his hand. Jesus, they're out here to see you, your mother and your brother. And he said, look around this room. This is my mother. This is my brother. Those who hear the will of God and do it. I mean, he wouldn't even go see his own mother. Don't, don't tell me about Mary and how much influence she's got. She's only got influence in the fact that she believes. In short, at the end, she did repent and started believing. And she got filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues. That's pretty good. But she wasn't there. She wasn't on, she wasn't on, on the... Even though she had that visitation, the angel told her all these things. And she gets, get, gets credit for all of that. But then she lost it. Why? Because people were telling her. Her own family were polluting her. Are y'all with me? Y'all looking at me so... Are we better than her, that we are totally immune from public opinion? I tell you, you have to get, right now is a time to develop a thick skin. <laughs> Keep a tender heart now, but <laughs> get your skin thick. <laughs> All right, so he said, you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren, kinfolk and friends, and some of you shall even be caused to put to death. And that's what they're proposing. ABC said it. ABC said that Trump voters need to be cleansed. What does that mean? Sent to camps, re-education camps. Guess what you do when you go to those camps? You don't come out. They said it. This is America, and ABC said it. They'll be held to account. They'll be held to account. My, my, my mediator heard that. I made sure he heard it. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Isn't that where it's at? I mean, they hate Trump, but really they hate Jesus. They hate God. They hate this country as founded, and they want to come in. What we're witnessing is a coup. It never stopped. It's been going on since before he was inaugurated. We already know that Obama had a meeting in the White House before he ever got inaugurated. And he put this whole thing into motion. He's been running a shadow government. And it's still the same right now. That's why they want to impeach our president tomorrow, take him out of office even before. It's got 10 more days, 9 more days. Why would they do that? Because they want to make sure that he doesn't run again. 
well, what if that happens? Well, I'm not even worried about what if that happens. You know what? I'm looking at my mediator. I know. I've gone, I went over their head already. It's kind of irrelevant what they say or what they do. <laughs> so Luke 21, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Jesus said you're going to be hated. You're not going to be the most popular. You're not going to be the, you're not going to be the bell of the ball. This is the time when they hate you. And we're feeling, aren't we? But he loves us. Thank God the one that counts. That's the one that counts. Amen. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not a hair of your head perish. I'm confessing that every day over my hair. Uh, <laughs> This is the one I wanted to get to, verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your intellect. That's what's under assault. In your patience. Let's see, faith and patience inherits the promises. What's the opposite of faith? Fear. I will not fear. Because he's with me. He said, I'll be with you. Assuredly not. Will I forsake you? Assuredly not. The Amplified says. I love it. Praise God. You getting anything out of this today? Hallelujah. We've got someone better than earthly government. So I got three quick things just to kind of leave you with. Um, the first one I already mentioned, number one, faith and patience. That's the first message I preached uh, after the election. A couple of messages on faith and patience inherits the promises. He said, I'll not uh, destroy the enemy all at once. He'll, he said, by little and little. The main thing we need is for our president to stay in office. Well, how can he? He's already conceded. He did not concede. That is a lie. If you read the text of what he said, he did not concede. Because a concession would have been to acknowledge Joe Biden as the president. He never did that. His words and what he's been saying are few, and that makes what he's saying very significant. He's sending signals. Well, do you know what's going on? I do not have a connection, and God has not told me how this is all playing out. I just, here's what I know about our president. He's a fighter. And look at the ones that aren't a fighter. See? Mitch McConnell, not a fighter. John Cornyn, not a fighter. Just voted for John. Had to, I held my nose, because who else are you going to vote for? Beto, or who was it? The woman? Now, you know, I knew he was per basically worthless when I voted for him. I just felt like, well, maybe he'll be handy coming into this. No, he's not handy at all. He just voted with Pelosi and Schumer. And what did he, exactly did he do? He basically said that your vote doesn't count. That's what both of them said. They were quick to say, let's move on. The people have spoken. Well, no, sir, they have not spoken, which is why, which is why Georgia's election went as bad as it did. Thousands and thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of Georgia voters that voted for Trump in the third, November the 3rd did not vote for those two losers that the, that the Republicans ran, Leffler and, and the other guy, Purdue. They were, they're mushy. They're not conservative. And they got so mad at the Republican leadership that they punished the Republicans. Of course, they, you know, what do you do? You can say that, but really that, that election was thrown anyway. If it's examined and audited, it will go over to those two. I'm not sure if they're a blessing or not, if they were actually be, to become senators. I don't know how, what a good thing we have. But regardless, it was, it, all of these, I, I'm, you know, there's no, as far as I'm concerned, I've heard all the evidence that they've been able to present, which is very little. They can't present, you know, in a murder trial, do they present, present all the evidence to the uh, news media and then go to trial? No, because it all get thrown out. Oh, you tried this in the media, you know. So we haven't even seen, what little I've seen is, is overwhelming that it was stolen. Overwhelming. It's not even worth talking about. 
And yet we had these people get up and say, oh, well, the people have spoken. It's time to move on. Let's quit talking about this, this election. Let's get busy with the people's business. Yeah, let's get busy with your business. You've been paid off, you bum. Well, I went over his head, their head. So faith and patience. We have to be patient. God has got a plan. It, it, it's, you know, we, we may not know all the de details. We have some hints. I've mentioned some of those in prayer Thursday night. I can't mention them in public. I'll mention some of them tonight a little bit because we're not online. And uh, because we, well, there's, it's just, we have to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Number two, Jesus represents our cause. He's our mediator. We don't have to depend on government. We've got a greater government. I made that case over the last three messages that, that, the, one, that the ones that are with us are more than the ones that are against us. And that is the reason why they're so eager to get rid of him and, and besmirch him and us because everything they're doing to him, we're in mind. They hate us. They don't want us voting. In fact, they don't want any. You know what? Really, Democrats don't want to even compete for the vote. They want to get rid of the vote eventually and then just run everything and be the rulers. If they have an election, it'd be like they have in Russia where, you know, Putin is just magically reelected. Well, they've already figured out how to do that, just cheat. And then they can go to the UN and they can act like they're, we're a democracy and that we're a republic. Well, no, we're not. We're, run, we're no different than Russia, China, or any of the others. If they get their way, I don't believe they're going to get their way. So Jesus represents our cause. He's our mediator. And then, you know, God's intervening on behalf of two things. I mentioned this earlier. So keep praying and speaking. Why do we have to pray and to speak? Because it gives something for our high priest to carry into effect. Why do we have to keep speaking? America, the home of the breed. Uh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. One nation under God. Well, let's keep speaking it. It's our national motto. Well, it's not true anymore. Yes, it is true. We say it's true. We don't believe what they're saying. We're not going to agree with what they're saying. We agree with heaven. We agree. Jesus was the, he's the one that, that was the mediator of the covenant that was cut between the pilgrims and, and heaven. That's why the Democrats want to redo history. They want to erase our founding and say it was, no, it was, it was for the purposes of bringing slaves. That's a lie. It's just everything they do is a lie. So keep praying and speaking. God is intervening on behalf of our covenant and on behalf of America's covenant. So he's representing our cause. Don't lose that. The third one is we must not fear. I mean, fear, ha listen, when you start thinking about what's going to happen or what could happen or what may happen, listen, you're just entertaining the devil. Don't entertain the devil. We, we just know that God has heard us and God is moving on our behalf. He's intervening. He uses men, no question about it. And I have confidence in our president. He is a fighter. I don't believe there's anything in him that is quitting. I believe he has a plan. I don't claim to know what it is. Uh, I'm going to watch just like you are, but I'm watching in faith. <laughs>